So basically, it's time to start figuring out my handles if I haven't figured them out already. And usually what I like to do before I get this all cleaned up is uh, work on my handles. And so the reason I like to do that now is because this is going to take me some time to clean up. And my handles need to be the same consistency as that. So I can make them now and then let them set up until they're the same consistency as that. And so I'm just going to do something pretty simple. I've tried to make these look as much the same as possible. And I'm gonna bend them around. Oftentimes, if I want two handles, I'll make three or four. I'll make three or four of these so that I have two that look close, a lot closer. Um, but for this demonstration purpose, I'm just gonna do two. And so I wanna get this angle here right. So maybe they'll do something like that. Okay, so then I would flip these set outside. Um, so to set up to be the same consistency as my vessel. And so if it's a nice warm sunny day, it might take two hours. It might, if it's windy and hot, it only might take a half an hour until it's the same consistency. If it's a cool day, it would take even longer. So I would just set those outside and let those harden up while I still work on smoothing out this vessel. I'm gonna show you um, a couple other ways to make handles. So you can do the slab technique. So the one thing I do not want to see me do is make a scrap handle. And that is this. Whoa. This is what you did in elementary school, and it's pretty boring and pretty crappy. So, I kind of distorted my vessel there. Uh, and then also, you know, I want you to really be thinking about your vessel as a three-dimensional object. It's very, this thing is very, round. Um, it's got a lot of volume to it. And so a slab handle is pretty stingy. So also generally slab handles don't really work on your vessels. They're really boring and they don't really take into account to account the volume of your vessel and the three dimensionality of it. Uh, sometimes they can work. There's always exceptions to the rule. Um, for example, something like this is actually kind of interesting because now you're talking about all of the negative space that's in there. So that, so that could have some potential, maybe if they even sort of round. But still, I also, you know, really want you to think about this slap edge because the problem with this slap edge is it telegraphs the way in which it was manufactured. Meaning it just looks like you rolled out a slab of clay and you cut it out. And so you weren't really thinking about this line as it exists in space. Um, something that would be even more interesting would be something that considers that. Something that considers that line. And so... For example... This is much more interesting because now, because you can see that the slab changes, it goes thin to thick to thin again. And so something like that could be pretty interesting. It has a little bit more substance to your vessel. And it tells me, oh, you really were thinking about this line. So 
you can make slab handles, and this is how you do that. So when you work with the slab format, generally it's a lot easier to do this if you let your clay set up until it's uh, leather hard. Right now this is super wet, it's really super flexible. But if I really want geometric shape, it works a lot better to let it set up to leather hard because that way you're not distorting it. So as I'm building this, I'm manipulating it and distorting it and it's not going to hold its shape as well. But, so when you slab construct, you score and slip both sides. So score, score both sides, or use, if you don't slip both sides, use plenty of slip. And then you always add a welding core. So I'm just gonna make a really small coil. And then you need to score and slip everywhere that they attach. So inside and outside. If you have enough slip in there, you might not need to add some, but if you don't, you can add some. And then your welding coil goes all the way around. Blend it in with whatever tool fits. So I'm just really trying to compact this coil so that it doesn't look bad on the other side. Same with this. Just really trying to compact that and pushing it into the score lines. And then this is my top piece. So because it's really wet, I can just use my serrated rib to score with. And then I'm just going to use plenty of slip so I don't have to slip both sides. So that I have enough slip that it squeezes out. And the same thing. Welding coil all the way around, inside and out. I'm just using my serrated rib to blend with. And this kind of tool to blend my oil in there with. And now I'm going to flatten it out a little bit better. And so as this firms up, I can clean it up more later and it'll be a lot easier when the clay is a little bit more firm. I'm at least going to get a start at it. So now if I wanted to add this to my vessel, again I'm going to have to let it set up to get to the same consistency as this and then score and slip and attach. But the problem with this right now is that I've got all this trapped air on the inside. And so if I really wanted to attach this to this vessel, I would have to put an air hole somewhere. And so um, I could put an air hole in the vessel, or I could hide an air hole in here. It just depends on how you feel about the whole thing. So if I were to attach this to the vessel, um, I could draw a line on where it goes. And then again, remember, I have to let this set up to get the same consistency. And then I could just, that's where the marks are where the handle attaches. Then I could just cut a hole here, and that would be my air hole. You could even have an air hole as small as that. Uh, that works as well. Uh, you can also sculpt something. Um, if you want to make some sort of animal, whatever it is, you can pinch out the shape 
um, especially if it's not gigantic. Um, Hinge Pot is a great way to make things. And so I'm just making up some random animal that really doesn't even exist. Kind of looks like a seahorse so far. Um, so then I'm just using my serrated rib to kind of shape it a little bit better. And just rough it out. So if you're going to model a handle, make sure to bring in some reference material um, so that you know what it looks like so that you can emulate it better. And it'll be a lot easier and it will look a lot better. So model it out, just rough it out. And then usually what I like to do is I like to let it set up so it's uh, cheese hard. And then, so the general rule of thumb is anything over an inch will explode. And this is about two inches thick right here. So this has potential to explode. And so I need to hollow it out. So basically what I do, I wait till it's cheese hard and then I cut it in half and it's easier to cut it in half this way because it's easier to hollow it out. Then I take a loop tool and I try to make sure that my walls are the same consistency throughout. So I want my walls to be the same thickness all the way through this piece. And so the reason I like to wait for it to be leather hard to do this is it distorts a lot less. And also, you know, I don't have a lot of detail on here because when I cut it in half and hollow it out, you know, I sort of mess up the surface a little bit. Um, and then we're pretending this is closer to leather hard. And since when, when your clay is harder, when it's drier, then it becomes more important to score deeper and with a lot of marks. And so I always go in at least two, di two different directions. So both sides scored. And then there's plenty of slip to stick them together, to glue them back together. And so slip both sides in case you have some high or low spots, you make sure that everything's got glue attached to it. And then you put them together. And then you've got to add a welding foil. So I used plenty of slip in there. I probably don't need to add any more slip when I add my welding foil because that's a lot of slip. Now, just blend in your welding foil. So once you've got this pieced back together and you've got it all blended, you can start working on the details of it, like adding the eyes, if it's got wrinkles, the texture, that sort of thing. Um, you don't want to do the detail until after you've hollowed it out because it's easy to, you know, mess up all that surface that you've created. So you want to rough it out, hollow it out, and then do your detail. So at this point, I could start, um, it's a little wet, but I could start like adding the eyes to it. Because it's so wet, I didn't even score a slip. I just started. And then if I wanted to add little fins to it, I could do that. If I if this little animal needed some ears, I could go ahead and add those to it. Score and slip and add however you, whatever you want to do. 
And so if this is my handle, you know, I'm not sure where this is supposed to go. Maybe it makes more sense like this. So I'm creating some interesting space. Um, but so right now I have a problem though because I have all this trapped air. This is a little time bomb and it will explode unless I put an air hole in it. So you have to figure out where your air hole is. Maybe it's in the nose hole. Uh, maybe you, maybe it connects to the vessel so that it escapes through the vessel. It's really up to you, whatever you want to do. Um, another thing that you will probably want to do, especially because I, I almost tipped this thing over, um, is you want to flatten the bottom. And, and so what you do is you get a piece of canvas out and you get it really wet. And then you, you can either slide it back and forth. It just depends on the shape of your vessel. Sometimes it works better if you spin it around. And so this will really flatten your bottom if you need to flatten it out. And so you'll, it'll create a nice surface for you. You can also, if your vessel's hard enough, if it's dry enough, you can turn it upside down and you can do it on the top also. Uh, my vessel's pretty darn wet. So I think that's probably not the best idea. So when it also when it comes time to do this lift, you can get a sure form and you can get at eye level and you can take it down. And so you have to be careful because it's really easy to take too much down on one side and then take it down on this side and go back. You know, you can easily take off almost all of the top of your vessel. So get at eye level and do the best you can. And so I'm actually going to put a round lip on this and I'm gonna use the extruder. So I'll be on campus to do that part. But so in the meantime, while my handles are drying out, I'm gonna work on smoothing up smoothing the surface because basically what I like to do is add the handles very last and so I like to have a nice clean surface and so that way once the handles are on there I don't really have to touch it very much anymore because once I put those handles on it now it's really fragile and it's a lot easier to break so the least I can handle it after the handles are on the better I don't like to put the handles on and then do tons of cleanup because it's likely to break on me so also what you want to work on with this lip is creating the, the illusion that it is the same thickness. And so I just kind of go through and clean up this edge here to make it look, to make it look like it's the same thickness throughout. And so this part is just all about illusion.
So once you have your vessel cleaned up, it's time to attach your handles. I would prefer to have my vessel cleaned up a little bit better than it is now, um, but it's still so wet it's difficult to clean. Um, so this is good enough for demonstration purposes. So I have three handles here that I made. I'm only planning on adding two, uh, but like I said, I like to make extras so that I have two that match. And so. These are past leather hard, so when I squeeze them, they don't squeeze. So that's probably the consistency that they'll be when it's time for you to attach your handles because probably your vessel is going to be drier than mine. If your vessel is super dry, you can add some wet paper towel where you're going to add your handles to sort of moisten that part up. But just really try to make sure your handles are the same consistency as your vessel. And so since I just rolled these out by hand, they're not very perfect. And so I'm going to take a minute and clean them up. So I'm using my serrated rib to clean them up to make them nice and smooth. Because I want to clean them up first before I add them. Because they're a lot easier to clean now than they would be after they're attached. So once you've got both your handles cleaned up and you like them, um, you need to take a minute and look at your vessel <laughs> and figure out where the sweet spot is. Uh, because they're going to be, there's going to be one place where they're a little bit more symmetrical than other places. Um, and I kind of distorted mine a lot when I was cleaning it up on my lap, so I'm also just kind of straightening it out a little bit. But so find the sweet spot, find the place. This is not the best place. It's rounder up here and flatter over here. Um, so I would find that that is really a horrible place. Look how round it is there and how flat it is there. Um, so really find the place where it looks the best, which might be right about there. And then if you're going to frame your handles, to just have two handles, that's where you put them. But since this kind of bothers me how like lopsided it is, so I might, so I'm going to take a minute and try to fix it now.
So at some point, you might have to just put your template aside and just take a time, take a minute and look at it and work on it and make it as symmetrical as possible just using your eye. And so when you get it as good as you think you can get it, um, find, find a sweet spot and put your handles on. So we're, we're going to go with that. So this is where, I don't remember what I wanted to do. We'll do something like that. So mark it off. And then score and slip both sides. Make sure you score a whole bunch. Especially since your clay at this point is gotten a little drier. Use plenty of slip, both sides, and then put it on. So if you're not done yet, you got to score and slip all the way around here to make sure your handle really attaches. And so I want you guys to think a lot about how your handle meets the surface. And so I'll show you a few different examples of what I mean by that. So you always have to put a welding coil to attach your handle. And I like to use plenty of slip so I know that it's going to stick on it. So maybe you like this welding coil look. Maybe you like this coil, how it separates the vessel from the handle, sort of like a little buffer. And that's kind of cool. So, you know, you can just really make sure to push it in so that it's going to hold that shape and so that it's also going to be really connected. You really want to make sure that this coil is connected to both the handle and the vessel. And you can um, clean it up and make it look even more exaggerated. So I'm just using my cleanup tool here. And you can use a paintbrush as a sponge to really clean it up. And so I would let this firm up just a little bit because when it firms up, it'll be a lot easier to clean up and make it look pretty. But so maybe, maybe that's the look you want. So that's an option. Maybe you want it to look like it's just blended in, like some sort of CGI special effect. And so the handle maybe just morphs straight from the vessel. So that's an option too. So you can make it like it's just blended in. And again, as that dries out, you can uh, clean it up a little bit better. <laughs> or maybe you want it to look totally separate from the vessel. Like it just landed there like a butterfly or something. So I'm using my kind of tool with the blunt edges.
And then you can let this set up to where your clay is a little drier. And it's a little bit easier to clean up. Right now it's kind of tricky because it's so darn wet. So that's an option. Or maybe you want the handle to look like it's poking through the vessel. In which case, you just kind of carve into your vessel. So, if you do these last two, one of these last two techniques, you'll notice I, I ended up carving away a substantial amount of my welding coil. And so that's why it's really important to score super well because the coil that is left over is what's in the score lines. And so that's still really helping to hold it on. So you really want to make sure you're scoring quite well. And then take a wet paintbrush and clean that up. Again, it's a lot easier if you're if you let this set up a little bit more. So those are three options on how to do your handles. I'm gonna do the other one. So now you can see why it's important why I'm saying. Try to clean it up as much as possible before you put your handles on, because now this is really tricky to clean up this area right in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the other handle on, and then I will show you how to use the extruder and how to do a lip with the extruder. <laughs> 